Hey guys, so it's the 8th of April in 2024, and I've come down to check out a city called Lublin in the east side, in the center of Poland. So this is the city center of Lublin, and straight ahead you see the main street, the main shopping street with all the cafes and the bars and the restaurants and the entertainment. It's called Krakowski Shed Mishy Street. So it's the same name as the main street in uh, Warsaw, the capital of Poland. And um, this is the eighth biggest city in Poland. So population wise, it's around 400,000 people now, the population of Lublin. Lots of people have come here from Ukraine and Belarus escaping the war. So the population has um, rapidly increased recently. And you've also got lots and lots of students coming here from all over the world. Um, so the population is actually a lot bigger than what you see on paper. So there's a lot of students coming here from places far away like Africa, for example, to go to the medical university here. People are studying here to become doctors, for example. Um, the medical university attracts students from all over the world. There's also the technological university here. There's the science university here. There's also the, um, the Catholic university here as well. So um, this is kind of like a student city. You could call it a student city. So today I'm going to tell you as much information as possible about Lublin. I'm going to tell you the things to see and do here. I'm going to tell you about the location where Lublin is and how to get here and just get you as much information in as possible on this tour today. So this tour is taken on a Sunday evening about half five, six o'clock in the evening. So the town's been really, really busy today. I've been walking around since 12 in the afternoon and um, yeah, the streets are absolutely packed because Polish people, they go to church on a Sunday. It's a strict Catholic country. And after church, they walk around with their families um, here in the old town. So uh, this is the Grodzka Gate. So you walk through the Grodzka Gate to get to the, um, the old town area of town. And the old town is the most beautiful area. And that's the first thing that you should see when you come here to Lublin. So as you enter through this gate, normally you have live music playing most days. Um, there's a guy today, he's playing the guitar earlier on. It was really, really nice. And I was just in a cafe sitting in the sun. Um, it's been lovely and sunny today. The weather was about 24 degrees. Um, so it was just absolutely perfect. This has been the warmest April since I've moved here to Poland. I moved to Poland nine years ago and this has been the warmest, the warmest April that I've seen here. It's been like 22, 24 degrees, 26 degrees some days. Lovely weather. Um, so this is one of the best preserved old towns in the whole of Poland. And this is one of the reasons why you must visit this city. So in terms of the location here of Lublin, um, it's about 100 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. So it's um, one of the closest big cities here in Poland to Ukraine. Um, also, you're talking about in terms of Belarus. Belarus is not so far away, about 400 kilometers away. Um, and then you've got, um, um, you know, to get to the cities like Krakow, for example, it took me four hours on the train to get to Krakow. It's 300 kilometers away. Um, the train cost me around 12 pounds to get here. That's around 16 euros and it was a smooth and nice, very comfortable train ride. The train network in Poland is fantastic for backpacking and traveling around. So once you get to any Polish city, it's very, very easy to travel to all the, um, all the different Polish cities here. Um, now the nearest, um, the capital city um, with the bigger Chopin Airport, for example, Chopin Airport, um, that's very close to here. It's only two hours by bus and about one and a half hours by train. So I would recommend the train as the most comfortable way to get to Warsaw from here. Most of you will be flying into Warsaw Airport because you can fly from all over the world to Warsaw from USA and long haul flights from Dubai and places as well. Um, and then you can fly to Lublin as well with airlines like Ryanair and you're flying in from London, from Dublin, from Burgas, from Milan and from some airports, but not from so many airports really. Um, the options flying to Lublin are quite limited. So I think the majority of people would be flying into um, to Warsaw. So there's other cities nearby to here. The cities like uh, Zeshov, uh, Kielce is not so far. You can get to uh, Zeshov in two hours on the train or like two hours on the bus from here. And Zeshov is a wonderful Polish city. It's well worth a look um, as well. 
So here there's vendors selling things in the street. Uh, there's some uh, local street art here. Uh, they're selling all different pictures. Let's have a look close up. And let's have a look at the gate just from another angle from behind as well. Let's go up. lots of uh, terraces here for sitting outside as well. Uh, I've been around today, I had a coffee, it cost me three euros, which was 12 Polish Lati for a coffee here, um, just uh, about one minute away from here. So I'd say that in most places you're gonna pay about 12 Lati, which is about three euro for a coffee here. And in terms of a pint of beer, a lot of places were also about 12 Lati, which is about three euros for a pint of uh, Polish beer here. Um, if you buy Polish beer, like for example, Tiski, GBH, Perla, uh, they're the main Polish beers that you can buy here, then um, the Polish beer is much, much cheaper than buying international beer. If you buy an international beer or an Irish beer, such as Murphy's, for example, you might pay 25 or 30 zloty, which is five or six pounds for a beer. But if you buy Polish beer, it can be almost half the price. <laughs> So if you want a cup of tea, I just paid 12 zloty, which was three euros for a cup of tea. Um, it's always nice to give you an idea of the prices in places here. And a vodka and coke, um, where you get bigger measures than in England as well, you get 50 cl here. Um, in uh, Britain, you get a smaller one of like 25 cl. But um, it's going to be around three pounds for a vodka coke here. When you come to Poland, Poland is a vodka country. It's famous for having some of the best vodka in the whole world. If you want a good value vodka, um, that's not too expensive, then I recommend a Soplitsa vodka. Um, you can get a bottle of Soplitsa vodka for about eight pounds in the supermarkets here in Poland. So take lots of vodka home to England with you guys, back to Britain with you, or back home to wherever you're from. And also cigarettes are very, very cheap here in Poland. So cigarettes, for example, a carton of cigarettes, 200 cigarettes will cost you about 35 pounds here in Poland. And in England, cigarettes will cost you like 120 pounds um, for the 200 pack, the 200 carton of cigarettes. So maybe bring some cigarettes back home as well. You're only allowed to bring 200 now because Britain's left the European Union. So it's a bit stricter right now. So yeah, you want to um, uh, take as many cigarettes as you can back home, as many as you're allowed. You can also take a cigar back with you as well. You can get good value on the cigars here in Poland. It's always interesting when you travel to look at what you can buy cheaper in the country you go to and bring some things back home as well. So the uh, facades on these buildings are intact right from the past and they look absolutely fabulous. I mean, it's 70% maintained how it was in the past. It's not been renovated. 70% of it has not been renovated. This is an original old town. These facades are original. They're all different colors in pink, blue, yellow. Lovely to look at. But as you can see, almost every single table is full. It's so busy today. Uh, the whole terrace is absolutely packed here. And Lublin's got quite a cosmopolitan feel. I mean, there's people here from all over the world because of the universities and the students are all here. And there's all kinds of street entertainment here for families as well. You can see all the children out there and the families. Lovely. The streets are all cobbled, guys, so don't wear high heels. Wear comfortable trainers when you come here because you will slip or you will trip. And when you're in Poland, you notice they have lots of Polish flags around here, all around. On the right side, you can see the Polish flag. People are quite patriotic here in Poland. Um, in the UK, it's more, you know, we don't really display flags. Um, it's not really a done thing in the UK, but they love to display the Polish flag around here in this country. So to say please here, you say Prussia. 
to say thank you, you say Jenkuya or Jenki. Uh, just to tell you a few words in the local language, it's very, very difficult Polish. Uh, to ask for a beer, you ask for a pivo. Uh, to ask for a coffee, ask for a kava. To ask for a white coffee, ask for a kava biawa. Tea is just the same. The one on the left side, Tribunalska, that's a really good one for pizza. That's like an Italian one, a pizza restaurant there. You can see the quality looks really good at the pizza. And there's a hotel there, Avatari Miasta Hotel. The one thing to be careful with is the homeless people and the beggars because they're like approaching me yesterday. They're, they're no harm to you, but just they're walking around. See the lady in front and uh, they will come up to you and they will ask you for money and everything. So just say Jenki, which means thank you. And then you don't have to, um, you don't have to give anything to them. Don't worry about that. But um, they're not aggressive in any way. They're just kind of uh, walking around a bit of a pest to the local area. Um, but you do find them. That's the only criticism I give here, really, of um, of this town. You get more you get more of them here than you get in other towns in Poland. I've a, there's less of them in Krakow. There's less of them in Warsaw. But uh, I've been approached a lot here in the last few days and last time I was here as well. Because this is like my fourth time here in Lublin. Um, I do like Lublin. I've been here a number of times, but I've not been here actually in the um, in the summertime yet. So a lot of the people are actually coming to Lublin to see Maidanek, which is the uh, the concentration camp um, from the, the Nazi atrocities in the past. And people want to come here to remember and to see the story and to see that. So a lot of tourists come here for that reason as well. Um, you've also got uh, things to see and do here, like the um, the open air museum, uh, where you can see all the, uh, all the regions outside. And it covers a very big area as well. So do go and see the um, the Ethnological Open Air Museum. The History Museum's close by to here. You just turn off to the right side just down here and you've got the uh, History Museum as well of Lublin. There's a lot of museums here. It's an academic city, so um, you'll find plenty of uh, museums to see if you like that type of thing as well. And in terms of just uh, enjoying the day, I'd say just like take a seat in one of these cafes and watch the people go by, um, watch all the live music in the street and it's a really nice day to pass the summer days i'd say the summer would be the best time to come here you know to lublin because the weather's really really perfect in the summer like 25 degrees 24 degrees and you know the winter's very very cold in lublin i came here in the winter time and it was minus temperatures maybe minus five it was very very dark and cold um the temperature is different in poland to in great britain they have lovely sunny summers here, very hot summers and nice, but no humidity, just nice sun, 25 degrees, it's perfect. Um, and their winters are brutally cold, like really, really cold and dark here in the winter time. So I'd say this city is more su suitable for a summer holiday. Um, Easter time would also be nice here as well. <laughs> Russian missiles um, because it's that close uh, but it's a long way from here because Lublin, Lublin province is very very big so it wasn't in the city where it happened it was in um, um, it was on the border area uh, closer to the border with Ukraine where it happened it's just wonderful to see the street musicians here they're very very talented Hotels. A good budget hotel in the city centre would be Hotel Victoria and it would cost you probably about 30 to 40 pounds a night for a room depending on the room type you have and it's located about 10 minutes walk away from Krakowski Shedmishi which is the main street and about 15 minutes walk away from the old town here. 
Um, I like the, the, the Focus Hotel Premium Conference. Um, don't get it confused with the other Focus Hotels. Stay in the Conference Hotel, the Focus Hotel Conference. And it's absolutely fantastic with a wonderful spa. But it's about 15 minutes car drive away or taxi ride away from the, from the city here. So it's a suburban hotel in a lovely countryside location with lovely views of the countryside. Um, I also recommend the Hotel Luxor as a luxury spa hotel, about 15 minutes drive away from here. And um, the Luxor Hotel is just luxurious, lovely spa in there as well, great big rooms with big double beds, lovely, you won't be disappointed. For a hotel, go on a website called Trivago, it compares all the prices of all the different hotels. You'll get yourself a bargain on Trivago because it's a comparison site. And also try co Hotels Combined, that also compares, compares all the hotel prices. And you must also try um, a, one, a site called Kayak. Kayak is my personal favourite, it just compares the prices of all the different uh, hotels there as well on Kayak. So we are now walking in the direction of the castle. So you walk straight ahead down these cobbled streets for about three or four minutes and you'll get to the castle. Um, the castle is definitely worth a look, ancient castle, uh, lovely place to take your photographs for Instagram and Facebook and that type of thing. So you must see the, um, the castle when you come here. So you'll ask me, well, whereabouts is Poland? Well, Poland is right to the east side of European Union. It's kind of to the east side of Europe. And um, it takes about two and a half hours flight from, from Britain to get here to Poland or from Ireland, for example, the same two and a half hours flight. Poland is located right in the center of, the, of Europe, but just going across more to the east side. So it's the east side of the European Union and um, Poland borders upon many, many different countries. It's bordering with Germany. The nearest borders to here are obviously Ukraine and then Belarus. Um, it all, it, Poland borders with so many different countries. It borders with the Czech Republic and Slovakia as well. So Poland is like the powerhouse of Europe now because it's so well connected to all these different countries by land, by rail, by air. You know, you can just get here so easily. And when you live in Poland, I just love living in Poland because I can just travel everywhere so quickly. When I go on holidays to Bulgaria, it's two hours on the aeroplane. When I go to Spain, it's like three hours, three and a half hours on the aeroplane. Um, you can go to other countries so quickly from here. Wherever you go, you're close to. Even if you fly to places like Dubai, United Arab Emirates, for example, it's only six hours flight from here in Poland. But when you fly from England, it's such a long flight to get there. It's like eight hours or something. So guys, thank you very much for watching my guided tour today. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Travel with Carl. And that's Carl with a C-O-L. And guys, please give me some likes and some comments because it does help the channel. Cheers, guys. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Cheers.